Welcome back to another episode of Night Owl. Uh, quick before I begin, between the last episode and this one, I hosted about a two-hour live stream. So if you want to go check that out before watching this episode, I'm going to include a link in the description. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of messed up the recording on that one. I was going to post it on my YouTube channel, but uh, right now the only way to actually get to that stream is to head over to my Twitch page, which you should totally follow if you want to be notified next time I stream. But uh, enough with the shameless uh, sh self-promotion. Let's get into this uh, episode and uh, let me tell you what we're going to be doing. So we're starting things off by tweaking the train station. So basically half of this episode was recorded before that stream and then the other half was, was done after. But I've been, uh, if you've been following me on Twitter, I've been posting a lot of screenshots of this train station and uh, tweeting a lot as well about all the issues that I've been having with this uh, railway replacer mod which uh i mean don't get me wrong everything works fine except my train station given the size of it the uh, the asset creator actually turned it into a uh sub building so sub building is basically an asset that uh, is composed by multiple assets inside now the issue with that is that when I plot the station, I get the option from the railway replacer mod to change the tracks from the station into the new ones. And uh, for any other, you know, regular size station, that will be fine. Except this one, you can see on the left of the screen, well, now it's gone, but you pay, if you pay attention, you can see a segment of vanilla tracks that didn't get updated. Now, there's a way, uh, obviously, you, you know, the mod doesn't uh, allow you to change those uh, for some reason. Uh, at least it doesn't affect the sub buildings. But uh, there's a way with Move It to actually, I think it's by holding Alt, you can target those elements and delete them. And I thought replacing them with a regular segment of the Railway Replacer mod was going to be enough. Well, you know, as, a, as we were doing that on the live stream, we actually saw trains spawning. Except that a day later, when I reloaded the save to continue recording this episode, uh, trains weren't spawning anymore. So that was uh, a little bit weird. <laughs> so I tried a couple things in order to, to try to fix it. And so far, the only way I was able to get it to work, which, you know, they are working now, which is good. But the only way I was able to get it to work and, you know, look also cohesive is to leave those vanilla tracks uh, the main station still has the replace tracks, if that makes sense to you, but that segment that has vanilla tracks, I decided to leave them like that. And instead, instead of replacing them straight up, I just grabbed a segment of the new tracks and put it over it. You're going to see that in a minute. It's going to make more sense uh, once you actually see it on camera. But I just wanted to... I've, I've been tweeting so much about this lately that uh, I, want, I wanted to get that out of the way uh, first uh, in this episode. It's uh, it's still functional, even after reloading. It looks pretty decent, um, unless you get really close with the camera and then you see the giant difference between the size of the vanilla rails and the ones that I just put down here. Now, uh, what I'm doing uh, here right now is just uh, tweaking the tracks so that they sort of flow in a much more realistic way. Usually train tracks don't have sharp turns. I mean, there's like a weird switch that the game generates that I really don't have much control over. Uh, so that pretty much stays like that. I think I actually improved it a little bit once I replaced the tracks, but uh, for the most part, it just looks like that. Um, but uh, I definitely, definitely want to come back to this station because there's obviously a lot of work that we need to do on the tracks themselves, like beyond the station. There's a lot of details that we need to add. In this episode, we're mostly going to be focusing on adding details around the station, mainly the uh, the sidewalks, and uh, we're going to be adding some planters and decals. I really don't want to spoil the rest of the episode, but that's what we're going to be working on in a couple of minutes. At the same time, I just decided that, you know, this, this parking lot looked a little bit barren, so I just decided to put some parking lots and some decals to make it look a bit more integrated. And uh, as we begin uh, the work on this main roundabout that I, I think I worked on this in the first or the second episode and we haven't uh, returned to this uh, area since. So uh, most of the uh, efforts in this episode as well are gonna be focused on this, on this area right here, trying to have a very seamless transition 
uh, from the main bridge that uh, where all the cars and trucks are getting into the city into this sort of uh, I call it the low speed interchange because it's like a roundabout that has a much lower speed limit and uh, hopefully distributes the traffic evenly into, for example, the industrial or the future industrial area, actually, because it doesn't exist right now where all those trucks are coming from the right of the screen right now. And, uh, you know, all the future neighborhoods that we're yet to work on. Um, talking about uh, future things that we need to work on. So I, I do want to address uh, some of the comments from uh, the previous video while we keep uh, working on this on camera uh, about the uh, the botanical garden. So I think that was like the first time I've gotten like a lot of uh, comments saying that I should probably redo that, which you know what? I, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense actually, because I do like how it looks aesthetically. I think it's okay, but I can understand why it doesn't make the most sense. Uh, and the combination of materials is not ideal. I just did what I could with the materials that I had. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to leave that as it is for now, because, you know, that thing as a background is better. Like what, what, I, what I did in the previous episode is better than nothing at all. <laughs> but if um, if there's asset creators that are watching the stream, uh, sorry, this uh, video, or uh, if you can link me to better assets that I could use uh, to sort of redo that area of the city in a much more realistic way, please uh, contact me or let me know or send me links because uh, I definitely am going to go back and rework that uh, at a later date. Not right now because <laughs> I definitely want to move on to other projects. I have a, a laundry list of things that I wanted to hear, but uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be revisiting that. So don't don't worry about that. Um, okay, so this, uh, what you see on the screen right now is happening after the stream. Uh, I started this on camera and uh, what I'm doing here is just adding some cobblestone decals to the sidewalks to, well, basically I wanted to have a different aesthetic than all the other sidewalks. Obviously I can't plop decals on every single sidewalk in the city because, you know, the game has, has its limits, but since this is such a central an iconic location of Nidal, I figured, hey, let's put some some work in here that is going to be very visible, especially because we have those giant sidewalks that uh, most of the other blocks in, in Nidal no, don't necessarily have. And, you know, for the most part, it's pretty simple. Just me adding cobblestone uh, patterns uh, and mixing them up. Sorry, mix them up with uh, with the actual base uh, concrete texture that the map theme has. You probably notice that I'm using a lot of those, uh, what is it called, the uh, the drain the metal grids. Uh, I've, I've been using those a lot to sort of uh, transition between different textures. Because like, for example, right now, if I keep those uh, cobblestones, this different type of cobblestone next to the regular pavement, it just, just looks weird. It's like a straight line that could work theoretically. That's, I mean, it's not terrible. But if you add a transition like this, like where I'm adding those uh, those metal uh, drain, I don't know if you call it like drain, I don't know what to call it. They're, 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 I think that the asset is called drain, but I forgot the actual name of it. Um, you get the point. It's a great way to transition between different textures. You can see it on that entrance over there into the station where you transition from one cobblestone tile to another one. It just creates a much more uh, seamless transition. Obviously over there I was trying to um, to add a few textures uh, and cover a large patch and uh, given the odd shapes of this station you end up with a lot of sea fighting if you want to you know th there's always a struggle between me using the minimum amount of of uh, in this case decals to optimize night so that I can keep working on this for a while and not run out of props in, in like five episodes but sometimes in order to do that, you have to overlap large amounts or large size uh, decals with one another, and you end up with this uh, behavior that it's called sea fighting, which means that uh, the two textures are on the same plane, and uh, there there is one solution against that, which is lower some of those decals up and down. Um, but uh, given the, the size and the amount and the odd shape of that uh, area, uh, it was much more difficult than just simply, you know, lowering or raising one texture or another. So what I end up doing is uh, just putting some purple grass that uh, is now long gone because this explanation was uh, way, <laughs> way longer than uh, 
the, the, t the time that it took for me to actually do it. And uh, while I was in the station, or at least in the area by the station, I decided to add some more details around it, like in this uh, this weird sort of building with a uh, street that kind of goes uh, nowhere, it's like a dead end street into that uh, semi modern building. You know, just the whole area of this uh, station, or at least the surrounding areas, is what I was working on. And uh, there we go. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode. This is the final look of the station, where I kept those vanilla segments, and then I put some uh, some other segments on top of it, just so that we can get the right look of the uh, of the tracks. And uh, at a glance, if you're looking at the station from above, you really don't notice the difference. Uh, another area that I've been putting a lot of effort is this um, this parking lot that we worked on also back on like episode 2 or something like that. We're on episode, what, 19 now or 18? Holy crap. It's quite the... Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's way... I just realized that, by the way, as I was recording this. That's insane. Uh, in any case, um, this uh, parking lot, I love how this looks, by the way. I, I, this is like one of my favorite builds. It's so simple, too. That's what I like about it. But I decided to add some vegetation to sort of separate it from everything else. And uh, just adding clusters of trees like I usually do. And we have this like sort of signature style that Nidal has. I'm guessing like the municipality of Nidal uh, <laughs> uses the same landscape contract uh, contractors. So there's these rows of uh, tall trees that I wanted to sort of uh, use to highlight different areas to add contrast between the different roads. Uh, obviously, I went a little bit overkill first, but then I, I toned it down. I ended up keeping those on just the one side and uh, obviously coupling that with some other types of uh, bushes that we've been using quite a bit. I try to repeat the same type of vegetation. I don't want to like have all kinds of different things all over the place. Uh, normally, you would just see trees of the same sort of kind in cities. You wouldn't have like an insane amount of... I mean, there, there is an insane variety in real life, but uh, this being just a game, I try to keep everything sort of very cohesive. So I do switch from different trees in different areas every once in a while, but for the most part, they're all the same and they're used in the same um, configuration, if you will. We also had these like old power lines that I used to connect our, I mean, our power generation now it's like hidden in the city is like one of these tiny buildings that generates like a million watts, but uh, those uh, wooden power lines looked really nice, so I ended up removing from this area, which were too like front and center. They didn't need to be so highlighted, but I ended up keeping a few of those that uh, connect the uh, future industrial area, at least one of the future industrial areas. So we should probably get started on that because it's been, you know, like I said, uh, over 18 episodes of this series and I haven't really done much industrial yet. And, and what's funny is that we don't have a lot of demand as I look at the meters down below on the screen. That's interesting. Hmm. Um, so we're back, by the way, here onto this uh, roundabout. I decided to get rid of those trees. They they look a little bit too repetitive. Um, so instead, I decided to add some bushes. The, the landscaping on this area, and by the way, we're unfortunately, we're not going to get this finished in this episode. But... Um, the landscaping, I wanted to keep it like really simple. I imagine like the entrance of the city wouldn't be like this giant, you know, park with amazing trees and things like that. I wanted to keep it like very mostly functional, looking okay, aesthetically okay, but uh, definitely don't go over the top. I, I, I might add some more things, don't get me wrong. But uh, for the most part, we're just keeping it to this, uh, you know, row of bushes that it's mostly there to prevent uh, cars from oncoming traffic to be blinded by by the by the lights of the other cars almost like a like a natural barrier and uh, over here what i'm doing is basically extending um just a segment of a potential bike path it's actually a shared bike path with pedestrian path i'm using a propless as you can see on the search box down below i'm using a propless version of the park life paths I struggled for a while trying to find that. I thought uh, I saw it uh, when I was putting together the um, the trailer for Park Life, uh, and uh, I couldn't find them again. And then on the stream, someone told me, "No, no, you actually just search for Propless," and I did, and I found them. So they're not in the menus. I was looking for them in the menus, and I couldn't find them. 
But if you search for propolis, you will find a propolis version of these path that uh, actually I should, I'm probably gonna be using a lot more than uh, the regular propped versions, uh, at least in some areas. Now, since uh, I'm basically bringing this path down manually and pushing the terrain with the path to go underneath, I'm not really creating a bridge because, uh, you know, these roads, this specific road uh, segment, the one above, if I use the bridge, the vanilla bridge, it's way, way too thick. And uh, that means that I have to lower whatever road goes underneath much, much lower, which doesn't look super realistic for bikes. Like, you don't really need a super high, uh, you know, clearance uh, in terms of the height of the bridge. So by doing this, I can get it to a reasonable height and then all I have to do is just fake the bridge. That's why I use some concrete walls and some other like stone walls to make it look uh, more realistic. Uh, it does create some glitchiness in terms of the lights. You, you can see it when I zoom out. There's like a dark shade of uh, a shadow on that road. Not too much I can do about that. I might be able to, to put down some purple wall asphalt or something like that to make it look a little bit nicer, but it's not so ugly looking that it bothers me that much, but I'll probably address it later on. And uh, obviously, since this pedestrian path is only for pedestrians and I also wanted bikes to use it, I ended up overlaying on top of the propolis version of this a regular vanilla bike path. And honestly, it looks freaking awesome. Like, just look at the textures themselves. Because if you use a regular bike path, it's just, you know, plain concrete. If you have a good, you know, map theme, Things look good, but uh, overlaying with the pedestrian path, man, that's a winner. Anyways, uh, let's transition into the before and after that I know many of you have been waiting for. As uh, we take a look at some of the cinematics that lie ahead, I would like to ask you to like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel and haven't already, make sure to subscribe. That way you're not a fine next time I post a video. But uh, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.